Wodamaya. Wodamaya. That is the man who I'd be talking about today. I think that was Indian accent. <coughs> but, um, the reason why I'm bringing this up, number one, I'm still getting that other channel together. Like I said, the channel's been parked for over a year. So, you'll know once I announce the uh, channel, I got to fix it up, you know? And I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> It's going to be my last time going with another channel. Because you know I'm really getting fed up with all the censorship and the bullshit. I mean, it's more clear than ever that they're really censoring people and only letting their uh, puppets and hired coons uh, do what they need to do, which is spew propaganda. So, gets tiring. Plus, no, you know, it's just paying the ass. But, excuse me. So, you know, it is what it is on that. But, <clears throat> um, let me just say this too. Just to get this out of the way, <laughs> bought uh, one of those uh, GPU, you want to call it a kickstand, whatever you want to call it, bought one of those that apparently for the last, what, year or so, haven't been getting the full benefit because I guess these GPUs, these new ones are so fucking heavy, so I guess it was putting a little strain on the motherboard, even though the motherboard is supposed to be able to carry heavy duty uh, items on it, but... <clears throat> Whatever the case was, got the little kickstand support. Now I'm seeing graphics like I don't know what and speed like I don't know what. So apparently it was either it wasn't making the full electrical contact. So it wasn't getting up to speed. I don't know what it was, but whatever the case is, it's vastly improved. But um Wado Wadamaya. The reason why I'm talking about this guy. Because I guess he's a Pan-African. And he's very popular now. And, uh... He... Said that his intent was to show Africa... Or show the Africa that... The Western media... Does not show. Now, if you go to that China CGN Africa... All you get from Tunisia down to Cape Town is Chinese propaganda, how people in Africa are supposed to love Chinese uh, culture, which is colonization. Because if you're trying to help people, like I said years ago, if you're trying to help people, nobody needs to love your culture because they love your money. They just built a new bridge. I think it was in Ghana or somewhere. You know, Chinese love building bridges. And, you know, they praise the Chinese for building the bridge. See, instead of having them build bridges for free or for some other condition, just hire the fucking Chinese company to build your bridge. These fucking Africans, are that dumb? You realize skyscrapers and bridges in this country, in the U.S., Damn, man, I'm tired of these fucking temperature changes, man. You get in the car, it's cold one minute, and then it heats up the next. I mean, it's, it's fucking insane. Anyway, fogging up the car. But uh, <laughs> skyscrapers and bridges and some apartment buildings and some other shit, you realize all that shit is not U.S. made. And not U.S. built. If you watch some shows about skyscrapers and shit, it could be can come from multinational companies or just another country. Offshore offshore oil rigs, you know, those are built by a lot of, uh, usually Sweden or somewhere, some Scandinavian country. So, 
these Africans are a bunch of idiots, like I've been saying for years. <laughs> that bridge looks nice. Can the Africans maintain it? Can they repair it? But all these bridges from Tunisia down to South Africa, all this shit, like I said before, is just in preparation for the Chinese to get around Africa easily. They don't give a fuck about them. They can see when they go to Tunisia that these motherfuckers are not Africans, at least the ones in charge of the government. And they can see that others are mulattoes. They see that shit. But they don't give a fuck because that's not their mission. They do the same thing in every country. Teach them Kung Fu. Listen, man, a lot of us, we learn Chinese culture from two places. <laughs> and you know what those two places are. The Chinese place to get your food. Because you know damn well if it weren't for the Chinese restaurants, you wouldn't know about egg foo young and all these other fucking uh, Chinese uh, dishes. Uh, you know damn well that's the case. And the Kung Fu movies. I think the Kung Fu movies is probably where we really get the culture and we like the outfits and, and the, the, the weapons and all that kind of shit. That's the thing about China. They don't understand those Kung Fu movies have more of a cultural impact and spreading Chinese culture than this brainwashing uh, neo-colonialism does. But Africans are stupid. They'll let a chi China build a bridge, build a tunnel, build a dam under conditions of resources and putting you in debt. Just hire them to build a bridge. Pay them tell them to get lost it's that simple <laughs> these people are fucking dimwits I keep telling people that and that includes the fucking so called Arab North Ottoman Turk North so you look at one of those latest videos I might put on my Facebook you could clearly if you don't know what an Ottoman Turk looks like that video will show you one and if you don't recognize that shit I don't know what to tell you you, you keep thinking all these people who are light are all Arabs and shit when they all look differently. Maybe a lot of people can't tell people from their different looks, but I can because I've been studying that shit all my life. And somebody did ask me to put a video together. One of these days I will, once I get set. But this this channel right now, you know, I'm just fed up with the shit. The shit is frozen, basically. And I see other people have that problem, too. You know, they just freeze your shit. Really, you can, I can go live. I can put videos up. But there's a limit to how much I can get in views. There's a limit to how many subs I can get. I can't go lower. I don't go lower on the subs and I don't go higher. It just stays the same. You know, damn well that shouldn't have been the case. But that's what's happening. I, I mean, even if my shit didn't increase, it should decrease sometimes. You, you know, before they used to play the game of 10 up, 10 down. Now they just stopped. They just said, fuck it, we're going to hold you where you're at. So the next channel, that's going to be the last attempt on this shit. Because by then, I think all of YouTube is going to change to the point where the common man won't even be able to speak his piece. <laughs> you know, that Shannon Sharp shit. Uh, with the Cat Williams, I think it was up to 34 million last count. Why'd that get so high? You think Cat Williams is uh, 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 telling it like it is? Come on. You know that's bullshit. He's telling you what they want him to tell you because they take ownership of everything once people expose the shit. Now they take ownership of it. Just like fake news, they take ownership. The word woke, they take ownership. They, they turn that into thinking about uh, some gays and shit. Now this Illuminati shit. You got people out here supposedly exposing people and exposing the Freemasons. And that includes Cat Williams. And then you got people getting on him. You got one character talking about I'm, I'm calling out all the Freemasons. 
But his very organization is a Freemason, but he'll say, oh yeah, it's, it's the other ones, but it ain't me. Yeah, I'm going to show you how this is beyond Freemasonry. This is different. We start at this level. They start at that level. Motherfucker, it's the same thing. I mean, you might be a dumb idiot, but don't think that everybody else is. I mean, we know who these people are. Our motherfuckers can't read, can't mispronounce words like 20 times and shit, trying to figure out a word and trying to joke around like he's trying to uh, be funny, but he just can't figure out the fucking word. Motherfucker can't read. But some people are good at the con game. And they can, uh, you know, once they hear something, they can copy it. And some people might try to, you know, research a little bit to figure some things out. Fine. I guess that's a form of education. But other than that, they're bullshitting people. We know your outfit is a Freemason to the core. Then you got another character who I like. But over the years, the man exposed Freemasons in these in these other groups. Showed you the shit up and down. And if you know who I'm talking about, the man said that the Nation of Islam are soldiers for for the people. But yet this man went to the Nation of Islam up up in uh, top to bottom and show how it's all. Freemasonry. And let's not forget, in the past, he said he was a traveling man in public meetings. So, this is what they're doing. It's all bullshit. Even from the people who claim to be exposing shit. And like I said, the, the Farrakhan tests. Anybody validating the Nation of Islam and Farrakhan, they're, autom they're automatically dismissed. Automatically. Now, I, I'm trying to piece this Freemasonry shit together, not for the bullshit, but for the real shit, trying to figure out where they're going. And how long does it have to keep fucking taking for us to get a piece of the pie? Part of me thinks that something might be on the horizon that's good, but the other part of me is like, every time I think that, then we got... The same old vilification, public vilification of black people. Every time you turn on the news, you know that story, that guy that killed eight people from Chicago or Illinois found dead in Texas. More carjackings, more, what's that other shit, the uh, takeovers. I was watching one story of a takeover in Los Angeles. I see a lot of them, they're all over the place. I'm realizing those shit's a stage. I'm supposed to be a guest on a show. I'm going on there only because I like the host. I didn't like the way I left, but we, you know, we we gonna we gonna see what's up. We're gonna see how it's gonna go. I might discuss this a little more in depth on that show. These takeovers, these mass invasions of stores. See, the way my mind works. Let me get back to that world of Maya. So you know how it goes. This other shit comes up. <laughs> These people break into CVS's. Or just go in there in a mob. Just start taking shit. Looks like they're doing this shit for fun. Because. This latest case in Los Angeles. They're in a bakery. Who the fuck. What are you getting out of a bakery? It's not a. At one of those Italian bakeries where you got fancy pastries and cakes and, and cupcakes and shit. It's some fucking Mexican bakery. And you know, they got their own kind of shit. Cheap ass breads and shit. The fuck you getting out of that? You're going to risk 10 years, 20 years in prison. For just to get some uh, piece of bread. Come on. Doesn't make any sense. You go to CVS's and do this shit. I just went to a store today. About to get me some shaving cream. <laughs> and I was about to get some cheap toothbrushes. Just I, I just like having them. I got an electric one. But I like having a spare for a quick uh, brush. 
shit used to be two bucks. Now the fucking the shit's a four dollars, doubled in price. But the main thing is they, they put the shaving cream behind and the, and the disposable blades behind uh, glass. They locked the shit up. And I'm guessing because the prices got raised. This shit is crazy. And I guess they figure well if they get raided like that. People, you know, it's that with the liquid, uh, the the dishwashing, uh, not the dishwashing, <laughs> laundry detergent. If you shop, if you're smart and you shop right, no pun intended, you can actually get things cheap. Like me, I just bought the Trading Places uh, 4K. It was on sale at Best Buy for 14 And the ones that had it was like Ford and Roll in the Bronx. But I'm like... I can't see any immediate parking, so I'm like, man, I, I, I just, I'm not, I'm not doing it. So I said, fuck it. Then Amazon finally matched the price. Then I had me like a ten dollar off from the the what is that that uh up start upgrade whatever the hell that uh save money on gas thing is, even though it's your own money. Uh, <laughs> So I had a $10 coupon or Amazon gift card off of that. Got that shit for five bucks. I said, then that's the price that's right. And then I went to, matter of fact, Best Buy again. In the store, though. Because not all stores. I hate when Best Buy does that. They have a deal on some shit. And you can't have it delivered. But you got to go go chasing around different stores and shit to find the shit. I don't know why they do that shit. And they say they're not going to be selling movies anymore, but this one was in West Nyack, New York. They had went to the 4K Blu-ray section. Most of the shit was sold the fuck out. So people are buying the shit, apparently. I was going to get the Raiders of the Lost Ark and the Temple of Doom. But I said, man, I probably won't even watch those shits. Uh, and they were 14, and maybe if they had been 10... Probably would have got that shit, but 14. See, I'm looking at it like this. When I buy the two together, now we're talking about nearly $30 after taxes. That's that's how I look at it. So I said, fuck that. So what I did, I just bought the Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Since it was 10 bucks steel book. I don't really care about the steel book. It's just the movie. It's, it's cheap. Because if you buy the regular one, that's the thing, I, I again, I don't understand about Best Buy. You buy the regular Wakanda Forever, is 18 bucks. But if you buy the steel book one with the one that people always want, it's 10. <laughs> I don't get that shit. I did that shit with the boys in the hood and got that shit. Ended up selling that boys in the hood because after a while I realized that shit was boring. That's what I realized. Sometimes, you know, the shit doesn't hit you after a while, man. Until you sit on it and then after a while you just watch it. You think, man, this is supposed to be great. And then you watch it again. You're like, man, this shit is boring. So I, I bought the shit for 10 bucks, sold that shit for 50 Because so people want these steel books for some reason. The steel book, they look nice. I don't really care for the steel books because the you know, it comes with a car with the information on the back that they don't seem to want to print on the steel book. I think one of them did. But most of the time it comes with a separate car, so that kind of just messes, messes up everything. And they're heavy. But I did get the Scarface steel book years ago. Cause that was ten bucks again. That was a good deal. I see, like I get it when it's the when the movie is cheap. I don't know why they sell them for ten when they're supposed to be going for thirty five. But that's what they do but anyway. So I got that. Just want to throw that out there. Also, I've been on a Sunny Chiba binge and these Japanese karate movie binges too. By the way, because uh, I want to see actual karate in action. So some people may have seen on my Facebook, I um put a link to something called, what was it called? High Kick Girl. You can tell that was a low budget movie. Most of it took place in a fucking school, in a gym. But and it was, and in the second part of the movie, it was no longer about the girl anymore, which I thought was weird, but I don't know who that guy was. His face looked familiar. But the way he was doing his his karate moves and shit, I was like, okay, all right. 
you know, karate got, got has this appeal too. When you, when you see some slick moves. Um, but you know, and I see that they had two sequels. I gotta check those out. And you know why I had my little Amazon Prime renewed for one week. <laughs> but anyway, let me get back to the main shit I was talking about. This Chinese, this these uh, Africans with this Chinese shit. As you know, when people loan you something, they do it to set you up. They're going to collect after a while. They put in all these bases in Africa. People keep forgetting that Africa is right next to Europe. Normally, the white man would never let China or Russia, number one, into the Mediterranean and right next to them. But they are letting them, this is the unspoken part. You got you to gotta use your mind to figure this shit out. They're letting them do that because China manufactures every goddamn thing. So they need the natural resources. And China is just building shit just so that they can easily Get the resources. It's just that simple. And easily move the shit from all over Africa to get the resources all the way to Europe. That simple. And like I said, the danger of them mining and shit, if you find something ancient, you can tell the African the Chinese don't really respect Africans, but they want them to respect their culture. They find some shit that's ancient. If they find it in one piece, they might take the shit or they might just simply destroy what they might find. That's neither here nor there. Let me get to this why, why they might because this one shouldn't be too long. A couple years ago or so, I was on his uh, Instagram and his lives and shit. I kept asking the man. It's cool that you're making videos because I always said these, these when these Africans always say. Why don't you talk about Africa in a positive light? It's not all naked people running around and all that. And I always used to say, you got a phone, you got YouTube, you do it. It's not our job to promote Africa. If that's what you want, it's your job. And what Wadi Wode Maya got on the job. He, well, he's been on the job. Looking like Gary Coleman. <laughs> so, for the first few times, the man ignored my request. And you know what my request is. Why aren't you going to North Africa? Because he said he wanted to talk about the black people. He wanted to talk about diaspora. He started switching it to diaspora after a while. I said, man... Why are the Pan-Africans and Africans, why are you people so scared of North Africa? There's black people there too. That's where all the fucking history is at. Why do you ignore that? He kept saying, I'll go one time. First he ignored me and then after a while I kept pressing after he did a few lies and he finally answered. He's like, oh yeah, I plan on going. Last time he addressed me, that was over a fucking year ago. Motherfucker hasn't been there yet unless I missed the video. But the man, what brought me to this is because he's he went to Suriname and went to Jamaica. I'm like, in Brazil, I'm like, man, what's this motherfucker going to all these places for? The fuck that got to do with Africa? And then he's going to places and scrutinizing and critiquing the people, saying that certain places are supposed to be African or black, but the people don't look black. Well, you could have found that shit in North Africa. <laughs> shit. <laughs> fuck you talking about but yet when he goes to Ethiopia all the see that's the delusions these people have he went to Ethiopia they all see them as all black even though he had questions like do you would you date a West African because he know see these people they know that they see differences but minds have been programmed to just call them all African and black. And it's funny, I made a comment on YouTube 
because Somalia and Ethiopia are supposed to be, you know, having some tensions. Somalis like to play stupid, like uh, when you tell them your country, you're Arabs. You're in the Arab League. And they say, oh, no, we're not. I said, man, get that bullshit out of here. You know you tell us every goddamn thing about Somalia outside of the Arab League shit. And then once once we say, man, stop bullshitting, then they say, okay, it is in the Arab League, but that's for uh, uh, political alliances. That's bullshit. I just saw a video of the Comoros uh, leader and those people. I'm like, damn, they're in the Arab League too, but these motherfuckers are speaking French. So I'm like, what? and they're black. I'm like, what the fuck part? They're lighter than Somalis, though. That's the funny part. But they got different features from Somalis. Like, <laughs> that's the interesting part about the whole shit. Motherfuckers all over the place with the shit. So. Hold on, this shit. Hold on, that shit gets in my fucking uh, thing. It'll be sick. <coughs> Some fucking uh, fuel injection cleaner. <laughs> I'm gonna be sick. But um, so it's the Comoros, Arab, Arab League, Somali, Arab League. They don't speak Arabic. What are you in the Arab League for? How is it politically beneficial to you? Is it politically beneficial to Sudan? Is it? Politically beneficial to Yemen? Nope. <laughs> and I also pointed out the irony in the shit is that Somalia is in the Arab League having tensions with Ethiopia. But Ethiopians actually speak a Semitic language <laughs> and would be from Arabia. And some of them are actually lighter on a whole than Somali. You got to make that make sense. So, Wade Maya goes to these places, he critiques the local people because they're mixed, and some of them he wouldn't call black or African himself. But he will do that for Ethiopia. I, I think it's another case of others have taken an African or have control of an African territory with history. Perhaps the only histories in Africa that you can actually substantiate with artifacts. Ethiopia. Sudan, South Sudan, Egypt, Libya, even though most of that shit is Roman, Tunisia, Morocco, Algeria, all connected, of course, because of the Roman Empire. And even Chad might have a little some shit, but <clears throat> I looked up. But of course, that country is the way it is. So and who knows what's underneath the Sahara? But um, I point these things out because these Pan-Africans are hypocrites. Now, with Afro Think Tank, I force his hand to start talking about North Africa because you know damn well they were not. He was not talking about North Africa at all. They were all dismissed it. Tyron knows we were on a panel one time. A guy's like, oh, they took it. Let them have it. And I'm like, okay, that sounds very Pan-African. So if you could take pieces of Africa, let them have it. I said, man, what the, what's, what's the point then? If that's the case, that sounds like cowardness to the fullest extent. Well, you took my garage and my house. Fuck it. I ain't going to fight you to get it back because I'm too scared. Doesn't make any goddamn sense. You took my car. <laughs> it's yours now. <laughs> this is why Africans are cowards. All these Negroes on YouTube, all they ever talk about all fucking day. Kim at this, Kim at that. And they say, well, the white man took it. Let him have it. Stop talking about the shit then. 
I mean, damn. Now you got the war in Sudan. These motherfuckers might destroy whatever the fuck they got left in the ancient shit. I mean, damn. It's fucking crazy. So, why is why they Maya not going to North Africa? Why did he go all the way to the fucking uh, America, South America first, in Jamaica? Why is it every time people talk Africa, they got to fucking deal with Jamaica all the fucking time? The fuck? I'm tired of that shit. Leave Jamaica alone. They're not. They, they, they believe. They, a lot of them are from a fucking cult. Believing that Haile Selassie, an Arabian, who even said he wasn't black, is God. If that is not foolish enough for you right then and there, I don't know what is. But people will critique Nation of Islam, Morris Science Temple, with their fake gods, and people treating the so-called prophet. None of his shit, none of his predictions came true. Noble Jew Ali, I don't know what the fuck he prophesied that came to pass. <laughs> but they want to call a motherfucker a prophet, and that's what I call him, a motherfucker. <laughs> and none of you should get mad Why? Because none of you knew the motherfucker That's why Motherfucker died a hundred years ago <laughs> Fuck you get Fuck you getting upset for So If these people Have silly ass prophets and shit Fake ass gods Then how come nobody calls this Rastafari uh, bullshit out because it's been put into your brains that that's culture. That's why. But really, it's weakness because when you get down to the bottom of these uh, Rastafarians, all they are are fucking drug addicts. You 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 prove me wrong. They're just fucking drug addicts, smoke weed all fucking day, and they're cowards because they fear fighting, so they go retreat, grow dreadlocks. And retreat to uh, out of society and do nothing. And that's part of the reason. And, and, and just give you philosophy all day. That's part of the reason why Jamaica is not run by so-called African black. Same thing with Guyana, Guyana, Suriname. All these places. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to call this shit out. Oh, yeah, and there was some other dude who got some channel trying to get views he only got 1600 subs but he's a uh, he's, he's doing anything for views trying to act like he's a phd or some shit traveling the world went to mauritius now you know who, who was the only one talking about mauritius in the in, in the in the indian takeover me now everybody want to check it out now act like they knew about it see i tell you i go to the places that motherfuckers don't talk about because that's those are the places that's important for pan Africanism. He was talking about getting discriminated against in Mauritius, but some of this shit was kind of fishy to me. But um, he said the Indian majority they you know they don't want what he called African people there. He said maybe it's my dreads. Maybe he's a sensationalist. Maybe that could be the case too. But instead of going into these African countries and you see foreigners taking it over, why don't you pan Africans actually move in mass to these countries, get you some wives, raise up an army to take over the country? Because they these motherfuckers don't have any country, no, no real army. They're driving around. All this shit is surplus shit. Bought from, you know, is this uh, the equivalent of buying shit from uh, the Goodwill? I, 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 I'm joking, but you know that's real. Riding around in Toyotas, I, I did learn that some of those Toyota pickups might be lightly armored, <laughs> but you don't see white man army riding around in no motherfucking Toyota pickups. I mean, come on. 
That's what I realized. I said, damn, the Japanese are making a killing. Selling some bullshit. Man, even police shouldn't have no shit like that. It's fucking crazy. But, um, yeah, some people are coming. Just want to make sure I uh, try not to look them. These some Indians. Let's <clears throat> try to see if the woman got, got something on her. Look at that. See these Indians come driving an Audi. Oh, yeah, you know, speaking of that, too. Michi X video. You notice how motherfuckers... I told you these motherfuckers be listening to what I'm saying. And instead of just giving me the motherfucking credit or mentioning my name, they just take, 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 take. That's another reason I got tired of watching the video, uh, doing the videos and shit. Because I'm like, damn. That's why the quality of the videos are going down. Because it's like, damn. Motherfuckers take from me. Just mention my name at least. God damn. Tariq Nashi talking about the delineation shit as he calls it. He got that shit from Claude Anderson. And not me. Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. But see that's his escape mechanism too. So if they. Because he's about to get out of that whole shit. You can see. You can tell he's trying to exit. So now he's putting the shit on Claude Anderson. So you want to know where I got the shit from? It's Claude Anderson. So in that case, fuck it. You can give it to Claude. <laughs> you can get the blame to Claude Anderson then. But he's trying to back out of that shit. Because he keeps throwing in African stuff, pan-Africanism and shit. And you listen to his new uh, ex-lives that I guess he put on his own channel because he wanted the money. Uh, again, he keeps putting white people, letting them come on. And stay on. It's like he's he's he, they're testing him. One guy even finished a sentence for Tariq Nasheed. I'm like, how? Uh, I guess the guy was getting too far ahead of himself. That Italian guy. When he talked about going back to Ireland, listen to that shit closely. I said, damn, this motherfucker is something else. Full of shit. But Michi X, she, you know, got on there talking about how Indians and others are coming over. How many times have I, I've been saying these people take over a sector, the tech industry in particular, and a whole bunch of other middle businesses, tobacco businesses, gas stations, Dunkin' Donuts, Popeyes, uh, hotel businesses, not the fancy kind. But the kind that people will frequent most, uh, you know, from the scumbag uh, uh, motels that people will stay in by the week. With hookers and drug addicts. All the way up to, I, I guess, what's that shit? Best Western or some shit? Country in one of those shits. That might be the fanciest type of shit they come up with. But the white man lets them do that shit. Organized crime. Does not even shake them down. And I've been saying to myself. Black people got shaken down by organized crime. Headed by small hats. And pimp. And, and, and the Italians are being. And the Irish were pimped by them. But yet the Chinese. The East Indians come up with some business segments. Now Chinese. They got their organized crime. I haven't heard about East Indian organized crime in this country. But at least as far as with guns and shit. But you know they got organized crime with the scamming and shit. Nobody touches them. Why? Now you look at what's going on. You look at the real news in India. You can find it. They got fucking gangs. Organized crime. They don't give a fuck about no Vishnu and all that kind of shit. They're hacking. They're shooting up. They're selling drugs. They're doing drugs. Doing drive-bys. But see... When they come to this country, you don't hear about that. But yet, the shit does happen in this country. But the shit is kept low key. People have been following my Facebook. I put a few, few of that shit out. Now, some people might say, well, they were Guyanese. So. But they, they were Guyanese, but they never forgot that they were fucking East Indian. You can watch the interrogations. 
they always maintain that they were East Indians, but the white man put them down as black. <laughs> Don't ask me why, but he did. So, and it could, like I said, it could have been because they killed a lot of people selling drugs and shit, so they just want to put their crime and mix the shit in with our stats. That could have just as easily have been East Indian crime. And I think that's the reason why the FBI will put some Hispanics, Mexican types, as white. So that way they can calm down the so-called Hispanic crime stats and just throw the shit in with white. Whites have always complained. Well, racist whites have always complained. They're like, why they got to mix the shit in with us? They just want us to look worse. What are stats? But see, they've been doing that right before they've been promoting all these Mexicans and shit. And trying to make them, you know, somebody that uh, people are supposed to accept. So that way, if people want to say these people are criminals, you look up their crime stats. The shit is skewed. And I guess since white people are supposed to be heavenly, I guess they can afford to uh, put Hispanic uh, criminal activities into the white uh, people and it shouldn't make a dent, I guess. <laughs> but meanwhile, we got to have Caribbeans, Africans, uh, even East Indians from uh, uh, the Caribbean and <laughs> Guyanese and shit. They got to get mixed in with us when they do something bad. When they do something good. Now, you know, I'm about to go on the show. Saturday. Those people can verify without question who the fuck was talking about all this shit before Tariq Nashi even decided to jump on it. And people who don't believe he did, he, he bit my style. <laughs> he did that because I started making videos about him and they were getting a lot of traction, especially on the last channel. So when you want to hear what people are saying, like when I break off uh, of the main topic and start talking about shit like this. They say, damn, that sounds good. They might look it up. Now they say, well, you know what? Fuck this guy. I'm going to take the shit for myself. You know he's a hustler stealing money and all that kind of shit. The fuck? Why wouldn't he? That's, that's what people like him do. Take the shit for myself. When it sounds good. Now when it gets too much, I'm getting too much heat. My money's getting uh, uh, tight. I'm not going to mention Alquan, even though he technically could, if he wants to say, hey, blame that guy. But like I always say, I say, my shit wasn't talking about the African. Because the African never gave a fuck about us one way or the other. It was always the Jamaican that's down our fucking backs. That's why I might try to act shit again, see if... Uh, I can catch him out there, but damn, I just, I'm just i not staying up till 3, 4 in the morning just to talk to this guy because I might not even be in the, in the right spirit to really go off. <laughs> so I'll catch him in places that he's been knowing that he's in the chat room and light him up in the chat room. Because you know he, he used to be in my chat room under assumed identity because you know he's a fucking troll. If you're smart, you could tell when he's in the chat rooms because he's a fucking narcissist. So there are some things that narcissists can't help but to do. Even when trolling under an assumed identity, they can't help but to do. I'm not going to say what that is because I don't want to give the man any tips. But once I get a thousand on the new channel that I promote, it's not going to be up when this video comes up. Because uh, I, I didn't even start working on shit. I had a template that I used to develop for, uh, to decorate the YouTube pages. Because, you know, those dimensions and shit, you got to get that shit just right. Because if you go by what they tell you to go by, the shit doesn't fit. So, I had a template that got the shit exact. I used the shit. They must have changed shit around. Because I used it. 
and the shit is still out of whack. That's rough to do because you got to keep doing this shit over and over and over again. And I think when it goes down the mobile, it looks one way, but don't worry on the next channel. And I'm not saying what it is or where it is right now. You got to park them. That's what you, that's what I advise everybody to do. Just park your channel. Don't even put the, the metadata into it that'll connect it to you. Just park it. Then when you're ready, put the metadata in. And then, um, you know, hook it up. But once I do, I, I'm going to need a thousand subs first. Then I'll go live again. And do some other shit. But I'll let you know. I got, I, I'm coming with a different type of you want to call it cover or what have you and we'll see if they fuck with this channel because again it's not other people this time it's youtube fucking blocking comments now because saying i got hate speech on comments and shit but yet you got racist shit every time you uh go on a video a police video with black people on it man it's them it's their culture all that kind of shit it's, it's fucking annoying but anyway this why they Maya guy I'm going to try and contact this guy again, but the fact that he went to South America and not North Africa tells me that I, I don't want to call the man a coward, but that seems to be the way of pan Africanists. They fear North Africa. They say, I hate the so-called Arab taking over North Africa in the history, but they control the history from the original Arabs, which were black. To the Ottoman Turks, they have controlled this shit for what, a thousand years. They get the money from tourism. Like I said before, motherfucking Ottoman Turks and even the Arabs have not produced anything in Egypt that makes people want to go. Maybe the food, but a lot of that is based on Egyptian food, but most of it is based on Turkic food. And not Arab food. And if you think I'm joking, go put it on YouTube and look up. Uh, just put in something simple like rice pilaf. How that's made. And you'll see a Central Asian Republic come up like Uzbekistan or somewhere. Turkmenistan. Now, if you don't know about the Turks, you know, a country like Turkmenistan should give you an idea. <laughs> of what they're all about. They're originally Mongol Asians. And there was a video, like modern day Turkey, said that they're trying to get a rebuild a coalition with other Turks. And when you put up the map, you got Turkey. The next group of Turks, they're fucking close by. In name. Fucking eastern Iraq and Iran. They're not Persians in Iran. The black original Persians are black. That's why you got to stop being fooled or tricked or deceived by coons like people in France and uh, Sarnetta. You see motherfucking black motherfuckers with Afros in Asia. I mean, <laughs> you don't have to speculate what the fuck they are or who they were and how they came. To, now, yeah, I admit the, the how they were there, given who they show today could be shocking to a lot of people. Because it's like, damn, if it was black, what the fuck happened? Well, you research that shit. But no matter what the fuck happened, you see the proof of what once was. And then you got Saad Netter and his crew trying to act like they into uh, the shit I talk about, talking about uh, Persian Egypt, Persian occupied Egypt. I see these motherfuckers never talked about that shit because they try to say they, they changed the race and complexion of Egypt. I said the motherfucking Persians were black. The little, the few Persian occupied Egyptian artifacts I can find, and I always remind people they're very hard to find. You can see the black. That's why the white man hides the shit. And some people will say, oh, well, they didn't occupy the shit for too long. Motherfucker, I think it was it. They occupied the ship for maybe a couple of hundred years at two different intervals. 
something to that effect. That's enough. <laughs> That's enough time. Shit, the French didn't occupy uh, fucking Egypt for too long, but people still referenced the French. I mean, come on, we, we got we got to stop this bullshit. And I said to sign that in his crew because they they don't at least have me black them chats. I said, you motherfuckers never talk about no other part of Africa, only Egypt. And then they try to act like they're bringing up Kemet. And they had that Shaka uh, up there. I think it was a re repeat. But you hear when Shaka was trying to talk about uh, Nubia. Motherfucker stumbling, stuttering. Trying to think of the, the best bullshit he can come up with. Which was if you are a dimwit, you'll say he says something. That's if you don't know anything about it. But he said nothing for a half hour. But when he talks about ancient Kemet, the motherfucker run on uh, 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 the length of a fucking uh, book in a half hour. Non-stop details. And say the shit with confidence. But when he's talking about Nubia, he's like, about uh, uh, the, uh, what'd they say? Uh, what's his name? What's that name of that uh, guy? The uh, And they did this and they uh, did that. And then, uh, what was the year? What was the guy? But see, when it's Kemet, it's like, yeah. Ramsey's three, uh, the third, uh, the Pharaoh this did that, uh, the story new and all that kind of, you know, they, they, they running off the top of their heads. Cause you know, they know that Freemasonry shit, but see the Freemasonry don't teach you about that other shit. That's why these guys are not paying Africans. They can't run that shit down. They don't know about North Africa. They're ignorant. That's what I said. When it comes to any part of Africa. Matter of fact, I was in that chat room uh, a side nutter and the guy, some guy said that ancient Egyptians were not black. And I asked the motherfucker a question. Because you know how I do. I just ask questions to, to entrap people. And that is to entrap people who are lying. I asked him, were ancient Egypt's enemies or neighbors in Africa, were they black? He came back with some bullshit. You know how it is. Asked me a question and shit. I said, man, fuck the questions for me. Answer the motherfucking question. I hate when people do that shit. You want to start lying and trying to think of some good bullshit. You want to ask me a question. Fuck all that asking me a question shit. Just answer the question I asked. After a while, he came back and said, yes, they were. I said, so that means the ancient Egyptians were black too. Fuck their neighbor is going to be black and they're not going to be black. <laughs> makes no fucking sense. You got, and, and most of these Kemet people always say that they're black, but they say ancient Egyptians' neighbors were not black except for the Nubians. And they never mentioned the ancient Libyans. Never. Matter of fact, speaking of Egypt, man, this is going about an hour. I thought it was going to be a half hour for real. I swear, man, I'm telling you. I, I, I got a... Get the dates on this shit because I've been seeing I've been researching Egypt for quite some time mainly in the artifacts and because I like to see who who the fuck was really who but I've been seeing some suspicious people in ancient Egypt that should not be there according to the way history is laid out But if they're there, how did they get there? Why are they there? More importantly, how come the white man never talks about them? And I'll give you a hint. <laughs> the Egyptian eyeliner makeup. I could give you another hint, but I'm not going to do that. But just, let's just say I was watching some movies. And I said, there you go. There you go. Now I know Pan-Africanists and all that kind of shit, they're going to be like, ah, oh, shit. I think some of you have thought about this shit, too. But there is actual evidence to this shit. 
But why did the white, how come the white man wouldn't say anything about it? And I'm going to save the rest for last because the other shit is going to be very intriguing. And I want you to think about what Tyron would say when he goes and does his talks. When he would talk about some African groups coming from Asia. We're going to leave it like that. So why they Maya? Get your ass to North Africa. Pan Africans. Why don't you start raising hell in North Africa? The Tunisian uh, guy already told you he don't want your black ass in North Africa, which is African territory. I mean, imagine. Well, then again, I was about to say imagine, but shit. <laughs> it has happened in Germany. They said we don't want we don't want these motherfucking Turks in our country. <laughs> I was going to say, imagine some European country told some other Europeans get the fuck on. But Turks, they're not really European. Some of them are because they've been trapped in in in, in the, under the domination of uh, the Turks. So some of, like that guy, the lead lead singer from the Clash. Now that guy, he was Turkish. Joe Strummer, that's not his real name, British guy, but he was Turkish. You would call him white, but so many Turks, especially you look at them in the NBA, man, they're not white. You can clearly see the Asian in them. Asians, Mongol Asians, stopped right on Egypt's door during the Mongol invasions. And Mongolia just had an explosion too, by the way. But anyway, I'm going to end it like that, but I'm going to put, I'm going to look at these dates because I have noticed some peculiar things. I, I noticed this years ago, even when I dropped out of high school years ago and looking up Egypt. And I said, damn, because, you know, the main thing I was trying to figure out was, damn, the white man says they're not black. I see some things that look suspicious. You know, sometimes you'll see the hair. It used to be the features, but when you, even if a nose is a certain way, who cares if the lips, lips are thick? You know, it doesn't matter what the fucking nose is. If the skin is dark, yeah, it can mean some type of mixing, but... See, the white man will never show who they mix with. Like when we talk to these Somalis, you'll have my man, I think he's Somali against Pan-Africanism. He'll say they come from the Near East. See, the Near East doesn't tell me anything. I mean, Near East could be <laughs> a, a Northeastern Somalia, for all I know, or Ye Yemen. That doesn't tell me anything, but the Near East is always put into the, the white man the way he puts it. He makes you think of the Near East as somebody other than black. An assumed or presumed white type or yellow type, Pakistani type people. Anything that's not black. Ancient Persians, that's Near Eastern. That's black. I need to see who got mixed, who, who, who the source of the mixing came from. See, that's what I always tell, ask people to tell me. Don't tell me somebody's mixed unless you can tell me where the source is. If, if, you, just, if you can't tell the source, that means you're guessing. So you got to show, demonstrate the source or, and when I say the source, I don't mean look up in a book and, and say, okay, these pe this tribe uh, was here and they mixed here. I'm talking about you got to show me what this motherfucking tribe looked like in order to call somebody mixed. That's what you got to do. If you can't do that, then you go by language or you can go by customs. But customs, that's harder to prove than language. But you got to show it. Like when you go into the Caribbean and South America, because a lot of people don't realize all South America doesn't speak Spanish or Portuguese. <clears throat> a lot of black people in South America. You got a, you got people mixed in with the spoke, if you want to call it mixed in with the uh, East Indians. Visually, 
they're kind of hard to tell. The mixing, except for the hair, gets shinier and looser. Like that uh, brick lady from Somalia. So you see her hair. That you know you. A lot of people from Guyana got that look. Even though most of the time their hair would be straight because they will be just straight up East Indians. But they'll be dark. Lips m might not look quite like that, but you, know, but you get the idea. The point is, I've seen videos on Ethiopia where I've seen some people very light. And if you look <clears throat> in Sudan, you'll still see, I, I've seen some videos of Sudanese singers. They got that bright, that C.C. Peniston type look. That's the best way I could describe it. Those type of people. That to me shows some type of sourcing, but yet nobody can tell me what that sourcing is. Now, some people might say, well, they're just light. Like we got some light people looking like that. But you know that that light came from someplace. So you got to know where it came from. So, you know, we'll keep looking into that and see what's up. Times in now, okay. So, but in the future, this shit has always been on my mind about ancient Egypt, like a missing link. A missing link that somebody, including the white man, wants to keep hidden. And I'm gonna say this too before I leave, because I was watching some videos. Some people said, uh, "Well, if ancient Egypt was so great." And ancient Africans were so great. How come other Africans didn't build nothing uh, even close to it? But they did. Some of them did. And when they did take over Egypt, they were able to rule it. And being able to take it over was a feat in and of itself. Because if they didn't have what it took, they wouldn't have been able to do it. But I want to see, I want to look into something. Because I've seen some things like when you talk about architecture or technology period those are things you got to look into like when I was watching these fucking karate movies Sonny Chiba shit I kept looking at I said damn this is 1970 1972 when you watch a movie from the US from 1972 you say to yourself, damn, that shit look like it's 1972. <laughs> but when I watch these Japanese movies from then, you, you say to yourself, God damn, you know, it's the old days. And their cars, for some odd reason, look pretty archaic. I think they were more modern on the inside. But you would see technology and shit. So I said, let me look up this technology Japan had. And then Japan innovated a lot of shit. They said they created the laptop. They created... Somebody falsely said that they created video games, which is not true. But they did pioneer the video games. And of course, they keep the business afloat now with the, you know, the Nintendo and the, the, the PlayStation, Sega, when they were out. And of course, all the other publishers and shit. Like you watch some of those Japanese movies, Sunny Chiba shit. It'll say uh, it's by, uh, made by uh, Bandai. You know, they made video games. Namco, Bandai. Uh, they made a whole lot of shit. Uh, recording mediums. Uh, you know, the they technology is far ahead of what we have. You can even look at uh, surround receivers. Blu-ray, all that kind of shit. You'll see, that's another thing they created too. All the shit with Sony. And you'll see uh, shit is well above what's available here. But I'm going to close it out by saying, speaking of Japan, it's watching a documentary from a guy who got killed in a plane. It was a 1985 plane crash, Flight 123, I believe it was called. Look up the documentary on that. That shit was pretty intriguing. 
Kind of scary to go down in a plane, man, especially when you know it's going down and, you'll, <laughs> and you know it's going to go down. Shit. Out of all the plane crashes, that one looked like the scariest one because, phew. Anyway, with that, I'm out.